They were the exception. Cassie's got a stretch. <laughs> Popular with the people. Morning. But without a party to go to. Hey, how are you? Good to see you. Now it seems the independents... Hello! ..are having their day. How do you view the role of an independent? Independents have played a critical role in the New South Wales Parliament. We ensure integrity in decision making, transparency, uh, and we've always been putting forward some of the more uh, difficult issues for the major parties uh, and succeeding at it. In the last Parliament, legislation from Sydney MP Alex Greenwich decriminalised abortion and legalised voluntary assisted dying. How'd you do it? I did it by working with my colleagues and listening to them. Now you've made it very clear in the next term, you've got your sights set on, as a starting point, banning gay conversion therapy. Why is that so important to you? As a gay man in New South Wales, I don't think there should be laws that discriminate against me and my community. I also don't think that we should in any way allow for someone to think they can fix us or change us. So to have both the Premier and Leader of the Opposition come out and support on a ban on conversion practices right before World Pride was huge. So what else do you want to achieve in the next term? In the next term there has to be a strong focus on uh, poker machine reform and we know the government has a really strong package there. What happens if Labor ends up in power? Look, cashless gaming is going to pass the New South Wales Parliament whether the Labor Party likes it or not. Whether it is the coalition and the crossbench working together in, in government or in opposition, we're going to get this legislation through. If Labor gets elected and they don't push it, I'll do a private member's bill and do it. The longtime independent member for Lake Macquarie, Greg Piper, had a significant win in the final days of the last parliament. The government supported his bill to remove the cap on containers at the port of Newcastle. And ahead of the election, he's now shifted focus. Right. Thank you. He wants tougher rules for government grants programs. A, uh, a, a number of these matters that have come to light just recently, and it's uh, it's um, been a very uh, infuriating situation when it seems like there's just such overt abuse of of the system. What else is on your agenda for the next term of parliament? Look, there's a number of things that I, I really want to achieve locally. I will be parochial about some of those things, about uh, health services into the area. Do you have any demands? One of them that is, we've got the opportunity now to do something about is gaming. That's really important to me. For a majority in New South Wales, 47 seats are needed. And while it started in majority, the coalition government ended the parliamentary term in minority. Labor has 36 seats, the Greens three. The rest are independents. There have been some boundary shifts and not all independents are running again, but seven are, including three who defected from the Shooters, Fishers and Farmers Party. Hey, Bill. G'day, Ash. Welcome to Orange. Yeah, thanks. Should we hit the road? Yeah, let's go. This is a big car. You've gone from being a Shooters MP to an independent. How's the transition been? Yeah, it's been good. It's been quite liberating, actually. Do you take a different approach now? Nothing changes for me on the ground in terms of the work I do in the community. I think it's really just to represent your area and your electorate and hold government to account, whatever government it is. I don't honestly know who's going to win, but I think one thing's for sure, it's probably going to be a minority government either way. You know, I'll, I'll look at, if it comes to it, um, who, who offers the best outcomes and best support for my local electorate. In the event of a hung parliament, the major parties may have an expanded crossbench to deal with. There are five teals running this election. Three other independents are challenging Liberals and two are expected to take on Labor in Sydney's West. And they're buoyed by the independent success at the federal election. Gone are the days where independents were a quirk of the system and a hyper-local representative. As we saw in the federal election, they're now a genuine political force. And with the prospect of their power growing in New South Wales, it becomes a delicate balance between their influence as an individual and the mandate of an elected government, even if it's in minority. I would not want to see uh, a crossbench who uh, agreed to establish a government or to provide confidence to a, uh, to a government and then think that they're going to be the government. That is just wrong. You obviously have to, you know, respect the government is the government or the opposition is the opposition and they both play a key role. 
Our job though uh, is to help push them, um, to help them deliver reforms that are good for the community. None of the independents are revealing which party they'd support if a minority government needs to be formed. I know it's harder for the government of the day to deal with a minority government, but I think you get a better outcome in terms of the legislation. And then where do you fit into that in terms of your, your power and your influence? Yeah, yeah, well, well, look, I'll, I'll look at each and every bill on its merits and make a determination then. First, the voters get to exert their power at the polls.